a chunk of years left on his deal. What does this signify to stretch it out to, I don't know how many years, what do you have running? Well, the idea behind it was that I wanted Ed to be here for the rest of his life, really, and he was getting so many phone calls from agents and folks that were looking for him to go to other jobs. And I think that was hurting him in, in recruiting. Uh, Ed is a highly sought-after coach out there, so for us, we wanted to make sure this is the place he wanted to be. You look at the generosity of he and Narisa's gift back to the college. That's unprecedented, particularly to academics. So I think it's a perfect match for us, and I just wanted to put all of those rumors to rest. Were you getting phone calls from coaches that, like as recent as whatever? Or well, I get getting, phone calls from yes, agents and yes. other people talking about yep. Ed. Sure, and Ed gets them as well. And that's a distraction. I think if, if student athletes that he's recruiting are thinking that perhaps he's going to leave, then that hurts us. And Ed really wanted to be here, so it was a commitment on the college part to keep him there. Can you just talk about the excitement of knowing that you've locked him up in Friartown for hopefully the rest of his career? Well, what's great about it, you've watched what Ed has done over the last five years, and it's unprecedented. And with this new facility, I just left uh, the CFO and the architectural designs for the new Friar Development Complex, which was going to be as good as any in the country. I think we have the infrastructure now to have consistent success long term. And if you really think about it, it's continuity of leadership, and Ed has done such a great job. And I just, he's a great fit for us, and I just wanted him, and Father wanted him here for as long as he wanted to be here. Is there any like perks for me, the assistants, or is there anything for them from this new deal? Did Ed like say, you know, stipulations for them or anything? Well, we've done some things financially for the budget and, you know, travel kinds mm -hmm. of things that will certainly help him uh, in the program. And, you know, we're raising money that's helping the program as well. So it really was more about just making sure that he doesn't have a lot of distractions moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. you know? Can, uh, how many years is a lifetime deal? <laughs> well, it, it's one of those things where as long as Ed wants to be here, Ed's going to be here. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure on Ed and myself to make sure that we're winning games because at the end of the day, that's a big part of it. But it's more than winning games for us. Ed is an ambassador for the school, helps us with admissions. Uh, he's a very high-profile African-American male that really helps us with diversity on campus and a lot of the issues that we've been dealing with. So. Uh, it's bigger than just being the basketball coach. He's an ambassador for the institution, and that's a big part of it. Would you say it's more than 10 years? Um, I'd rather not get into the number. Just just let's say that as long as Ed wants to be here, Ed would be here. Okay. The terms of the deal, not just numbers, but the different things in it, um, why is everything kind of um, kept on wraps? I just It's a private um, uh, relationship with Ed and I. If Ed wants to release those kinds of things, it's up to him, but... Out of respect for him, you know, it, it's it's up to him what he wants to release. It's, you know, you don't want your salary in the newspaper. You, I mean, you wouldn't want that published out there. And I, I, I find it interesting that everybody wants to know what those things are. Let's just say that he's paid fairly for the job he does, and there's a lot of expectations for him to be successful. So there, there's still a lot of pressure on him. Just because you have that, that deal, you know, he's a highly competitive guy, and we want to make sure we have success. Is this another piece of the puzzle, you know, you know, the Ruane Center, the development of that, you know, locking up the coach, is that another kind of piece of the whole puzzle of, like, men's basketball that maybe you've been searching for maybe since you got here? Like, is this another huge step in that direction? Well, for me, it's all about leadership. It's all about people, and I've been doing this for a long time, and when you know you have the right person that's a fit, and that is definitely a fit for Providence College. You want to make sure that he feels supported and comfortable. But I also want to know I have somebody that I trust. And Ed's somebody that I have a, a relationship with that I can be open, honest, and direct with him. He's very coachable. And he's just, uh, it just, it, it gets rid of a lot of the distractions that you have when people are chasing your coach. And, you know, with this new facility coming online, Ed will have what he needs to be successful for a very long time. Uh, you said about a year ago is when you started this. Was this one of those things that you wanted to go to him and lock it up, or you wanted to come to you and lock it up, or how did that kind of come about, knowing what he was going to get? Yeah, it was it was my initiative and Father Shanley's initiative. I mean, Ed had a long-term contract and was very comfortable, but it was us being proactive rather than reactive to kind of uh, other people coming after him. And I think Ed appreciates that. I mean, if you're doing a good job, you want to know that the people you work with appreciate the job that you're doing, and I think it went a long way to the reasons why Ed made the commitment back. He and Arisa made the commitment back to the institution from an academic standpoint. So it's just a really positive relationship, and I'm excited that he's made this commitment. You mentioned the Ruane Center. Do you, are you closer to a groundbreaking date this spring, or...? 
you know, we just spent four hours with the architects. I just walked outside to see the, the size of the building, which is pretty cool. Um, we're going to be doing some work starting in the end of May and get into it big time starting this summer. It's probably a, a 12 to 16 month process, but when this facility is done, it's going to be one of the best high performance facilities in the country. Certainly at our level, non-football, it will be probably the best there is, and that will help them recruit the best student athletes and also help develop the ones we have to the best that they can be. What would you say the chances are that we see Ed's picture on this wall one day? Oh, it, it'll definitely be there. If you think of what he's done over the last five years, it's, it's unprecedented. I mean, Arthur Parks can tell you some of the success we've had hasn't happened for 40 years. And if, if Ed continues to do what he's doing and have that kind of success, Ed will be one of the most transformational coaches in the history of Providence College and fall in line with this great gentleman behind us, including Joe Mullaney. So um, this is a special day in Friartown, and we're really blessed to have Ed as our head coach for a long time. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, guys.